is called the uh, fly has uh, angle equations. Again, uh, let me give you the result first. Sine to the VO plus the flight range angle equal to Q minus Q VO. So again, um, I think that is the, uh, my fault, also the author's, the author's fault. I think mm -hmm. in these chapters, uh, most of the time, I think more than 99% uh, of the time, if we really didn't say something, the Q sometimes would drop the BO. You know the Q is the number we calculate at the burnout. And so if you like, if you wish to keep everything consistent, you can put a bill here, okay? But for some reasons, if sometimes, if I would forget, you know that is for bill, okay? So, and for our textbook, in this equation, it's showing it has a bill, but in our textbook, in this equation, it didn't have the bill there, okay? But I want you to let you know that is meaning for the information we calculated at the burnout here. Okay, so so basically the two have the same meaning. Okay. Um, this one uh, can be explained by this. Uh, I'm not going to challenge my drawing. Um, I'm going to record it. Okay, so let me do this one. So this is the... Um, Elastic orbit. So this is the major axis. So this is the occupied focus and another focus here. So say um, say if this point is our burnout uh, point. Basically, this is the the whole entire uh, predictable orbit. This orbit basically is uh, covers a portion of the free flight, and that portion basically is somewhere we don't care. The whole thing is here. And so here is our bill. Velocity is tangent to um, so tangent to the burnout here. I moved, I just mark as a tangent in that direction is our velocity. Okay, so here I just marked as a tangent. And now, uh, basically, that one is fitting into here. And now I'm going to draw the local horizon. Local horizon simply is I take the 90 degrees to this one here. So, so these are 90 degrees. Okay, so by definition, the angle between the local horizon to our tangent, to our velocity, this angle is 5 EO. Okay. And also, I want to make um, the connecting from the burnout connecting to here to the other focus and we
we are trying to use the geometry and to explain this one. Okay, and, and let me make an additional uh, line here. From out here, I sorry making you guys so tired. It's not my fault. <laughs> 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 and make an additional line here. Okay. Um, Basically here is like this. Okay, good. Um, the first one, um, we're using the, how to say that one, the first one. said um, the, the first one is this we're using the um, the features of the geometry um, here is a, the is the fact once, say for example, if we uh, light, um, if we uh, light, uh, uh, say uh, the, if we put the light here, and then if we hit the light to any point on the, from inside of this electric orbit, and say if the inside of the electric orbit is reflective, then once we put the light here, then that hit here, that going to uh, hit the reflective light going to reach here. And the angles between the two kind of the uh, incident beams and reflective beams will make equal uh, respect to the normal line. So basically here, let me put the two angles are equal. Okay, so that is the properties of this. And then the second one is this. Um, If anyone can help me to show this angle is VBO, are you able to see it from my drawing?
okay, look at here. So let me make this triangle. This also is triangle, right? Because this is this is triangle, this triangle, and. <coughs> So VBO plus this angle, VBO plus this angle is equal to 90 degrees, <coughs> right? And this angle plus this angle is also 90 degrees. Sorry, let me put into another triangle here. Will be okay? So that means this VBO equal to this one. Good. So in this way, we come up with this. So this is due to the refraction. This is VBO here. So looking at this geometry, so here that we make this. So let me write the geometry here. And let me copy all the information to here. So that is a green line, and that is this line here. Okay, so right now this angle um, basically is two VBO. And then uh, with this geometry here. So this line, let me call it D. So D on one side, this one is, um, this one is V over two. So this angle is V over two. Okay, that one basically is what we have done here. So we simply bisect. So that is a half of the angle here. So that is in over two, side over two. Okay. So therefore from here we can see, uh, looking at the D here. So this one, this angle is uh, pi minus uh, two VBO and plus V over two. So basically, we're looking at this triangle here, and D will be equal to um, sine this is RBO, and the green one. Um, another property is this. At any point along the orbit, the summations of the distance to each focus will be the same equal to two, uh, 2a. So this one, the length equal to 2a minus RBO. Okay, basically that is a property. This is a focus, this is a focus. The length here, this is, uh, say this is the R1, this is R2. R1 plus R2 equal to 2a using these properties. Okay, so now using this triangle, we can see the D equal to 2A minus RO, RBO, times sine pi minus 2BO plus by F, F over 2. Okay, so that is the free flight. And by looking at this, the lower triangles, then we can also see the uh, D is also equal to RBO times uh, sine. Okay. So by equating the two informations together, then we can obtain that one. So that is the information we got here. And of course, we do a little bit of arrangement by introducing the parameters of Q there. The Q are the most fundamental equations, and uh, the majority of the work will be derived from using the two equations. And the challenge part, the whole thing, let me uh, make a note here. 
And from here, by looking at the two parameters, the two equations, we see what kind of parameters we will have and what parameters will be given. So that is a note I want you to make. So by looking at the two equations, we have parameters, uh, free flight uh, range angles, and we have the, uh, at the burnout, we have RBO, we have velocity BO, and we have VBO. And then also uh, from here, that is derived uh, quantity Q. So basically, uh, Q can be included in the two parameters. The same here, we have VBO and VFF. So everything is here. We have four parameters, and we only have two equations. So most of the time, we must know at least, is we must know at least two pieces of the information, and then we can utilize the two equations to solve for something. Okay, and one example, I'd, like we have done before, and here is this. Say, if we are given this, if we are given this, and if we are given this, then let me say this is equation one, and let me use this equation two. So if we are given the three things, then um, how about let me uh, tabulate the information. It will be easier. Let me get rid of this. Um, from equations one and two, um, with the parameters, Uh, here we have this and V uh, B O and V B O and then V B O. So <clears throat> if we are given and solve for so for example if we are given the those informations then we can solve for this and using Equation one, very straightforward. Because one the three are given, then basically everything on the right hand side is given. And then once we have those things, then um, for equation two, so if we are given the three numbers, then let me highlight the three things here. So this one is given, and Q are given. So from here, you can see it must have the given information, Q and VBO, they should be in certain way consistent. Otherwise, the system the, for looking at the, the two equations, it won't automatically satisfy. So that means in terms of our ballistic missile design, and they, shouldn't, they should have <coughs> existing certain kind of harmony in the designing of the key parameters, and that makes this equation always satisfied. If this equation not be satisfied, that means the design parameters won't be working. Okay, and we can look at the other scenarios. Um, maybe I can keep writing here. So that is the case one. So now the case two is. Um, say uh, we are given Q, so here if we are given is this, 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 we're going to solve for VBO, so that means using this equation you can see the VBO, those are the given, so in this way you need to take the, um, let me take this one. So basically here, those are the given, this given, those given. So maybe we can say using equation two. To solve for VBO. For equation two solve for VBO, we have a certain concerns. What kind of concerns? Let me place a certain numbers and we're going to go to the detail next time. And the concern is this. For example, let me give you a certain scenario. Say, for example, say right now we are given, we're going to calculate VBO and plus, say, this number. I just make a one, okay? So say this is one. For example, this V equal 
equal to one radian. Okay, so and so equal to say Q B O and say uh, I we are given the R and V such that the Q B O equal to um what uh point eight? How about that? Okay. So in this way that is two minus point eight and divided by point eight times sine and this one is plug in here. Okay, so we do this number crunching. So this one basically equal to uh one point two divided by point eight is how much? Uh three over two. And sine one half. Okay. Anyone, anyone can punch the number what is the sine point five? Anyone has any calculators? John is not here today. I know he hasn't been here for a long time. <coughs> Tell him once he, if anyone see him, he's wanted. Anyone has any calculators? No. I I want to get this number. Point zero zero eight seven. No. <clears throat> point zero zero eight. No, yeah, that should sign, be sine point five. Sine point five and in radian. Yeah, in, in radian. radian. Yeah. Point four seven nine. Point four seven nine and multiply yeah. three over two, how much? Point seven one nine. Okay. Good. Seven point seven one. Okay, good. So right now we have these numbers, then to calculate this one you can see here we have sine. So this is our sine functions. And sine functions right now here is this. Here is sine two phi B O plus one half. And that result is here. 0.719. So that corresponding give us two values. One is value here. Let me call the theta one. And one is value here. That is by due to the the anti symmetry. That is uh, pi minus theta one or 180 is minus theta one, right? And if you take the arc cosine of 0.719, that will be this number. Can you anyone punch it for us? How much is this one? That is the arc sine, 0.719, how much? That should be given in either in degree or radian, should be okay. Mm -hmm. 0.719 is a radian. 0 0.8. 0 0.8, exactly. Or 0.802. Okay, 0 0.02, okay. So in this way, this one will be equal to uh, this number, theta 2. This one, uh, unless you specify your calculators, otherwise your calculator always gives this number. So this one you need to mod manually do it. So that is 3.1416 minus 0 0.802. So that will be equal to how much? 2.3433. Uh, nine, six, about this one, okay? So that one, basically here I want to show you, we always have the second possible values here for theta two. So once we have this one, basically that one uh, equal to two feet, BO plus one half equal to this or equal to this, two numbers, okay? And now the design is in this way, so uh, one more minute let you, before let you go. So if somehow the other possibility is this, if I design the parameters such that this equation becomes sine to phi B O plus say, um, let me make a one, pi over two equal to say 1.2 times sine pi over two. If we have, uh, here you can see I actually pick up the numbers in this way, for this one here is V 
FF equal to pi, and Q is such that we have the uh, Q um, is such that the Q minus Q divided by Q equal to 1.2. I make up these numbers here, so that is the given. If we are given this number, you can see is this always satisfied? No. You can see for this case, this is basically is 1.2, right? For any sine function, it is possible to have a value greater than one. No. So basically, this is an eligible uh, parameters. Saying this one is showing the case. Uh, it's not always we can arbitrate uh, the design the parameters for given the range. And there's are quite a few uh, calculations issues involving these kind of considerations. So this one will give us more kind of troublesome things. And so next week, not next week, next time we will focus on here. And I will try to give you a few different scenarios and how to deal with that kind of, these kind of things. Okay. So I think the two equations basically constitute the basic equation. We have one more, uh, but uh, we see. Okay. Thank you.